Hello and welcome everyone, I am Maddles and welcome to game 2 of this best of 3, it's from the Battle.net World Championships, it is between the incredible, the legendary, the possible best foreigner ever, EG's Stefano, who is of course the red zone in the top right position, he is up against his teammate, the ye olde champion who of course came to fame very early on in Wings of Liberty. Evil Genius is Idra, who is the Blue Zoe player in the lower left, and of course being a best of three, being game two, the smarter of us among us will basically be aware that game one has happened. If you haven't watched it, then go and check it out on my channel. And well, it was an amazing ZVZ. It is possibly one of the best ZVZ games I have ever watched in my life. It was absolutely bonkers good. I was wow, like brilliant. Anyway, game two. Um yeah, well, I'm going to give it away. Idra did win game one. So that was probably a shock to most people watching. Most people would be like, yes, yeah, Stefano is going to take this with a breeze. Stefano is just so good. But Idra was just like, hey, no, 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 no. You may be the new kid on the block, but I run this town. And yeah, he is going to absolutely go for it. Because, of course, if he wins this, he's going to 2-0 his teammate. He's going to 2-0 Stefano, which really is something that a little while ago... People think taking one game off Stefano is pretty much impossible, let alone two. So, well, Idra, he's got a lot to go for. Stefano going for a 15 pull. Is Idra going to go for a 15 hatch? He is, so a different build to game one. He's just like, Phew. I'm just I'm just going to chill now. I'm, I'm a game up. I'm just going to get my hatchery. I'm going to go macro mode and just see what he throws at me. And, of course, Stefano... Going for a 15 hatch over a 15 ball. The differences are minute, in all honesty. Except Idra now going up to 16 for his pool. Is he going to go any more? Is he going to be much more bold? You can't be. You can't be, Idra. Go for a 16 pool. Don't try and go 17. Don't try it. Thank goodness you didn't try that. I panicked a bit there. But anyway, we've got the hatchery coming down here for Stefano at the time being. And, well, of course, as you can see, this is a very, very early variation in build order. And... This just is going to make such a huge difference going into the mid game. Idra following that pull up with gas. So it's hatch, pull, gas against pull, hatch, gas. So starting to get a bit more similar in the gas timings there. But Idra's still a lot quicker down. Of course, he's going to be able to get the double queens out quicker, which means quicker injects, which means more lava early on, which means more drones or more units. Or maybe a combination of drones and units, depending on how he wants to play this. Of course, in game one, we saw that both of these players were pretty much happy to really sit back, relax, chill for a long period of time. It wasn't really until about 9, 8, 39 minutes that they start really engaging. Before that, Idra was being very, very proactive with his scouting, trying to send speedlings up. Both the players got speed down early. Baning Nest followed that up with a spine crawler. So we'll wait to see if we're going to see that again. Of course, on daybreak, the rush distance slightly longer than an Antigua shipyard. But we'll wait and see exactly what they're wanting to do. So obviously, guys, this is from the Battle.net World Championship. So obviously, I'm sure most of you watch this know what's going to happen. But if even if you do, it's worth watching these two play again, especially after how well they played game one. Um, it's definitely, definitely worth watching. If you're a high-ranking Zerg player, I would strongly, strongly suggest finding the replay yourself, downloading it and giving a watch to and making notes of how they played. Because especially Idris' expansion management in game one was phenomenal. He stopped Stefano expanding to the point that Stefano had no mining bases. And meanwhile, he took his own expansions. His timing of those expansions were brilliant. We are going to see here that Idris is going to be able to make it in. Going to see the gas timings, which is exactly what he's going to want. He did see the baning nest as well. The baning nest for Idris on its way down at the moment. Zergling speed coming down for both these players. And well, this is, again, really reminiscent of game one, where, of course, we saw these two go for a very passive play style with Idra just getting more poking and prodding. Idra already two workers ahead, which may not seem like much, but all while you're getting these workers out, you're in a good spot. The spine quarter coming down here as well. There's a small gap there that, obviously, things can get through, so you might see a queen block that out. But meanwhile, we do have Stefano getting an awful lot of Zerglings out awfully early on. That is a big number. There's already four on the way over, eight more in production. That's going to take us up to 12. And, well, is Idra going to be in a position to deal with that? Well, if he gets some Banings out, yes he will be. He has got the overlord in the right position to see this. He's morphing in some banings now, and I'm just not sure this is a good move. He's got four banings on their way in. We've got a second spine crawler coming down here. And I can't help but feel by Stefano, this isn't the right thing to do. The Zergling's just taking too long to come over. The banings have morphed in. And of course, when you know your opponent, or he doesn't know his opponent has banings, but when banings are down, you're gonna be running into some problems with Zerglings alone. But here comes Stefano's banings as well. So this is gonna be a very, very intense fight. Two banings on one right there. Stefano those next group of banings are going to have to be absolutely perfect. He picks off so many banings there. That was absolutely brilliant. The joints surround all of the Zerglings. And well, as long as Stefano 
manages to kill a decent number of workers. He's going to be okay, but only two killed at the time being. Three killed. How does that leave things looking? Idra is now behind in the worker count. So yes, that's okay. That push was fine, but as you can see here, Stefano is following this up with more Zerglings. He is so aggressive right now. Idra moving forward, perhaps going for a counter-attack. It won't be a good move, though, because obviously we've got more stuff coming in. We've got the Evolution Chamber down there for Idra. He's already signing up on that plus one missile attack before his Rotoron is even thrown down, so he is upgrade heavy. Obviously, we are going to see here Stefano be able to defend these Zerglings off absolutely fine. Idra should pull back, as we're seeing there. That's brilliant. In terms of the work account, which is the really important thing, they are both exactly on equal now, and that is something that is very, very important important to take into account because obviously those workers in the early, in the late early game and in the mid game so critical to what you're able to do late game and as we saw in game one obviously with Idra keeping that additional income significant for significant portions of the match especially at the end he was just able to out macro that of his opponent the layer timings the layer about to finish up for Stefano now only half done for Idra the road to one about to finish up for Stefano as well where it's only well a third done for Idra so Idra behind a bit in tech that should mean that he should start pulling ahead in workers, but actually it's not going that way. The single infestation pick coming down for Stefano a lot, lot sooner than it's going to be able to be out for Idra. And of course, Infest is such a strong unit. The Banelings trying to get a good position, trying to connect with these Zerglings. It's going to be pretty close, of course. There are more Zerglings out. Three Zerglings go down to a Baneling. That's an okay trade in my opinion but well it's still getting all very very close and well both these players microing like absolute beasts if we look here well Stefano way higher on the APM actually up at 165 average compared to the 210 um, of Idra so this is getting really really close right now we've got the infestation pick coming down here for Idra as well now who's getting up his road speed as is Stefano Stefano taking his third base at a very similar time to Idra's third base there's only a couple of seconds between it and well you can see here that we've got a slight bit of problem with all of lag so there's probably some lag going on here which out ah, the Battle Net World Championships they could have got LAN <coughs> Blizzard take notes but obviously as you can see here, we've got, well, creep spread coming down from Idra. No creep spread again from Stefano. And that's a really different stylistic play from these two, actually. And it's something that I quite like. Stefano using these overlords to generate creep between his bases, which... I actually think it's a really clever move in ZBZ because you don't need creep spread that much. And this just allows you to join up your bases without ever missing an eject or... And that does make a difference. Um, it may only be a tiny difference, but it does. Looking at the work account, Stefano quite a long way ahead of 58 to 50. But Idra with a much better army supply, 56 to 28. This is going to be a close engagement. And to be honest, if Stefano doesn't react quickly, he could be running into some problems. He is getting out five more roaches, the two infestors. There are no infestors. Oh, actually, there are. There's two infestors out for Stefano already. Three now out. Of course, they're going to be so, so potent with Pathogen Glads against this larger force. They may actually be able to swing the tide of the battle into Stefano's favor, but it's going to be close. Stefano being forced to make an awkward for a lot of units. Pathogen Glands is only still researching actually for Idra here. Some good splitting. He's trying to move these units out. Microing the roaches incredibly well. And Stefano looks to be running in some problems. I'm amazed a fungal growth hasn't gone down yet. Some infested Terrans coming down for the time being, but as you can see, the Roach numbers just absolutely huge here for Idra at the moment. A good fungal growth goes down there when all those units were clumped up. So for the moment, Stefano is going to be able to hold this, and Idra, he's forced to fall back for the time being. That wasn't a very good engagement for Idra. It was to start with, but then really swung, especially when that fungal growth went down on the retreat. But of course, Pathogen Glands down out for Idra. Both players do have their third bases up. For the time being, the Overseer just chilling there. Possible counter-attack coming in here for Stefano. In terms of the upgrades, it's 1-0 equally. The plus 2 upgrade is nearly done though for Idra. That's going to be finished up in about 40 seconds, compared to it only being about a third done for Stefano, which of course means upgrade advantages in big Roach on Roach fights make tremendous amounts of damage. Looking around the map though, what else have we got? Well, we still have a couple more units coming through from Idra. The defender's advantage, absolutely huge. In terms of the army supply, Stefano does have a slightly bigger army at the time being, but there's a lack of infestors in this group of roaches. And of course, the infestors, as we just saw previously, can make an absolutely huge difference to the game. So, wait until that all goes down. Idra just chucking down his Hydroden there. Of course, in game one, we saw that be very, very potent. The Hydroden equally timed from Stefano as well. Literally at the same point, we do have the fourth base coming down here from Stefano which is very very similar to what we saw in game one the macro hatch coming down for Idra identical base timings and of course if you remember we saw in game one that Idra did a great job of denying the fourth base of his opponent so we'll see if that happens again this match but well this is 
again turning out to be a very very close game the work account 71 to 73 um, and if the fourth base stays up I mean this is gonna be something really critical if it does manage to stay up Idra now taking his own fourth base it's gonna be big but Stefano doesn't have a macro hatch so Idra is gonna have better production capabilities just due to having that macro hatch there and he's getting out, well, Stefano getting out 10 Hydras, 11 Hydras for Idra. They're both matching each other very, very closely. Groot's fine coming down for both these players. And, well, the plus 2 missile attack just kicking in now for Stefano. So, equal upgrades, of course. We do have the ground, um, the ground armor coming down for both these players but a great little contamination going down there preventing the armor upgrade for Idra for quite a few seconds actually and that's something you don't see done uh, even high levels of play but well we've got Idra's Hydra trying to force back that overseer for the time being the fourth base up and running now the infestors sitting right at the back there both these players being very very passive at the moment trying to wait and see what's going to go down see when it's safe to engage see what they can risk but to be honest, neither one of these players is going to want to risk too much. Of course, Daybreak, this base is a lot harder to pick off than it is on Antigua. So we'll wait and see whether Idra goes for it or whether they're both just going to be passive for the time being. These center rocks, they could get taken out at any moment. It just depends a lot on when these two really want to open the floodgates, allow the quick reinforcements, expose their fourth bases if they even want to, um, and whether they feel the risk is worth it. Meanwhile, Idra, he's getting up his 7th and 8th gas, 7th and 8th gas already mining there for Stefano, so gas really plays a lot into every matchup, but of course, in ZBZ, it means that you've just got more money coming in. Stefano getting his hive, and that is a really, really early hive when you think of game one. Idra didn't get his hive until gone the 20 minute mark, so that is really a key difference to what we saw in game one. Stefano going for a very different playstyle in terms of teching, and well, they're both at 200 to 200. We've got some infested Kevin's coming down for both players, and this is going to be a very, very close engagement. The better arc there for Idra, though, at the top, but of course, so many more units down here for Stefano, but he is attacking down a ramp, and of course, Stefano is. A, is got a terrible angle, a fungal growth goes down and Idra with an absolutely amazing engagement there and well as you can see it looks like this is getting cleaned up very very nicely although Stefano is able to close up some of the gaps there and level it out fractionally, he's got some roaches coming around the back here so he is able to pick off a queen that's always a good little win, picking off a couple of drones as well so that is probably going to pay off and as you can see here the difference in units lost is so marginal it's absolutely tiny they're nearly exactly equal a nice little burrow goes down there and overseer morphing in though so that's going to help things out here looking up at the top position we do have a couple of units darting and poking back meanwhile we've got reinforcements coming in from both players they're both near maxed out yet again the hive just about to finish out for stefano at the moment a couple of infested turns getting locked down of course they help soak up some damage infested gets picked up very nice from stefano there that was worthwhile but good fungal growth going down here by Idra at the moment, he's doing good damage, and of course, those fungal boats just do good bulk damage to a lot of units as they were comped up. Idra with a much better attack angle here. This is absolutely crazy, and well, that was not a good engagement for Stefano at all, but he has got a good angle here, but he just doesn't have enough units. Idra with a much more sizable force at 118 army supply compared to the 90. These two are absolutely microing like beasts. Stefano at over 400 APM at peak there, and well, this is pretty crazy. They are both absolutely going for it, and Idra, well, with a 35 supply lead is actually quite potent. A good fungal Growth goes down though there for Stefano, captured a lot of units preventing them from engaging. But well, Infested Terrans getting lobbed forward by Idra, they're going to soak up some fire, do some good damage as well. And Stefano, he's waiting for those roaches to come out, he is so desperate for those reinforcements. He's got units coming in from the side, which of course will tell his attack angle, will help him deal with the more sizable force. But Idra, he is just powering forward as best he can. And, well, it looks like most of Stefano's units are getting taken out here incredibly quickly. Meanwhile, behind this, Stefano is not taking any more bases, whereas Idra is taking his fifth base. Stefano loses his fourth, and we're now in a situation very, very similar to that of Game 1, where, of course, Idra is very, very comfortable in his income, very, very comfortable in his bases. He's up at 71 workers to the 64 of Stefano, and, well, you can see here Idra just powering forward, and there is the well-played, and Idra does indeed take this series 2 and oh. So, wow. Seriously, that these have been some really impressive games from these two. I have absolutely loved casting them. If you did enjoy, please subscribe, leave a cool comment, and well, like the video, and I'll catch you tomorrow for yet another new cast. Um, for the time being, though, thank you very much for watching, and bye for now.